<laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Freya Homer. Ah! I'm, those are two names that are similar. We're working budget cuts too. Right now, that's cool. I actually am so glad. Like, there aren't many, there aren't many VR games coming out, and I, I, now I'm finally sold on them. So please, Freya Homer. I saw your name in the credits. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, do you have a Discord? <laughs> what is your Discord name? You can DM it to me if you want. All right, there we go. Uh, ah! Can you hear me? Yes, too loud. Awesome. Apparently it's coming oh, out no, of the wrong no, things. No. Hold on, it's coming out of my actual speakers. This was a mistake. Hold on. Should uh, I whisper? Cool. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the arcade mode of the game and... Yeah, go for it. Wow. Also, I, I just have to say it's been amazing watching you play through this whole game. <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, like, you have a lot of fans um, at our office, so it's been amazing to see you play through this whole thing. Uh, so yeah, thank you so, so, so much for playing. That's really cool of you to say. Um, God, uh, hopefully the game audio is not too loud compared to the thing, but we'll just have to, we'll just figure it out. Uh, no, it should be fine. Okay. Well, that's incredibly kind of you to say. Um, my friend um, Matt, uh, Up Is Not Jump, recommended it. Uh, to me. Oh yeah, he made like a YouTube video on budget cuts, I think. He did. Like, super he did, yeah. He said, you should you should play this. Don't watch my video, it has a spoiler in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm really glad you played it. It's, uh, it's, it's really it's, nice to see. It's really good. I accidentally opened the arcade mode um, the first time when I first opened you it. you already played this? You so I know, I know some of this level. Gotcha. Do you want me to like not talk during gameplay or do you want me to like... No, go um, ahead. I'm. Uh, let's just, just, just hang out. I'm just, uh, yeah, un sure. I'm just unrelatedly going to be playing your game. <sighs> but yeah, like, on behalf of the entire team who are working on this game, just thank you so much again. It's amazing. Well, thank you. I hope, uh, I hope more people play it. I mean, I don't know how many people have played it. It's, I, I've, a, I've, a, I've trouble like understanding how VR games are profitable in the first place because like. You've got to rely on the pool of people who have access to the right thing and all that stuff. Like, that sounds pretty oh, tough. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really difficult because there's like no data on how much it's going to sell because it's very unreliable and very early, at least when we were working on budget cuts, right? Um, so it's been, that was really scary. But I think the, the positive side of all of this is that marketing gets easier because, well, there aren't a whole lot of, you know, VR hits out there and they help market the game. Um, yeah. So even though it's very risky, it's something as a small developer, it's kind of worth that risk just because, you know, we get that marketing from, uh, you know, Valve and Oculus and whatnot, right? That's true. This does, it is a very Valve feeling game. Um, a lot of people say that. Yeah. <laughs> which is very nice. Yeah, I mean, Valve, they're known to make good games. I'm not sure if you heard of that, I've heard about it, but <laughs> they made this great it's game called of... um, Half-Life Blue Shift. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the best game ever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting how many people compare this game to um, Portal, but I think one of our primary sources of inspiration was actually not Portal, it was Team Fortress 2. So whenever people told us there was a Valve game, it's like, but it's, we didn't really try to mimic Portal that much, but... Yeah, it's the, um, I think it's just the, the talking robots. Like, I think people Probably, do that yeah. with games where they're like, oh, there's like one thing, and then they go, oh my god, it's just like the other thing. That's a yeah. It's imagine and, and that was a, that, we have a that portal, was a trenchant right? analysis. Yeah, it's, it's there is kind of a portal. I didn't even realize that. Oh yeah, there is a portal as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I take it there's a, an advantage to being stealthy here instead of just uh, running around and murdering things. But that's also fun. I should play this on the hardest mode if I'm gonna do the this. Hey, go for whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> you can play it however you want to. Uh, if you want to do action, you can do that. If you want to do stealth, you can do that too. <sighs> okay. Also, it's weird how I have like a desynced video, so I'm not entirely sure what you're doing as we speak, but... You can just, you know, imagine based on what I'm... the noises I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can stream my screen to you as well, but I moved and my internet isn't good enough to quite do it, I think, in a way that would be like, would not break the stream. I don't know, don't worry about it, it's fine. Yeah. Cool. So, 
how long did this take to make? Like, what was the process like? Um, oh, you're, are you going to ask me lots of questions that I don't remember? <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Uh, I think, how long did we work on this? I would guess um, around two years, I want to say. It okay. could be wrong. Um, somewhere around there, yeah. It's also been like very, like we, the team has changed a lot during the process of making this game. Uh, like originally when we made the demo, we were like two and a half people. Uh, so that was, yeah, Marco in chat says that it was summer 2015, so around three years. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I imagine a lot of it would go into figuring out how, because you have to do all the initial work that like VR people after you will, will already have not need to do because you've done it, where like you figure out what kind of spaces people can traverse through and feel like real. Like if you're in a proper like, if you just put a game in VR, like Skyrim VR, it hurts. Like it's oh, yeah, there's yeah, a that th just hurts immediately. Yeah, yeah. There's um, a you've, there's this like excellent colorness to this game where I can. It doesn't feel awful to stand in it, which a lot of games do. Like I've tried playing Pavlov and like the the kinds where you just have a gun, and it's just like this feels too much like they just put a VR headset in a realistic game world and that just it hurts to do it's like a terrible idea so yeah you, you just can't do that like if, if you have an existing game and you add vr support for that you're gonna make people nauseous um mm. because the the problem is that you if you have any motion of the camera that you don't do yourself then that can trigger motion sickness yeah uh, it's kind of like um you know if you're sitting in a car and you're like reading a book or something that a lot oh. of people get motion sick for that oh yeah um, that makes me sick immediately. Uh, yeah. so in that case you are you're looking down so you don't see anything moving but your body's feeling the motions of the car right and that you, you know when that happens that's called vestibular mismatch in your inner ears you know the things that oh, control yeah. your balance I know uh, anyway, so VR is the opposite of that. Uh, emotion that you can see, but you're not feeling it. But you still get that same mis mismatch, right? Um, yeah. So they, they're two, two, yeah, two sides of the same coin. Um, so, so initially, when we started working on this game, we just wanted to make sure that that never happened. Um, there's, there's only one place in the game uh, where there's potentially risk for that, and that's when you move from the loading screen to the moving train, because then yeah. you do get a sense of acceleration. But as soon as you start moving, that's a linear motion, and mm. it's generally fine. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a point where I, with the train, where I was like, oh, that's weird. But it was like, I, I enjoyed the very slow overhead part where it comes at you and like you can feel it coming like it really demonstrates how like how real vr feels if you've been in it for long enough and the amount of nightmares that i'm gonna have about adam <laughs> i'm so like, sorry it's incredible how, what made you decide to make the game a living nightmare <laughs> halfway through well it's it's one of those I, I think it's probably one of those things that was kind of inspired by Portal. Because you mm. know that Portal was, it was marketed as a really cool puzzle game, right? Yeah. But once you played Portal, you realize that, oh, there's actually like a long story here. And there's, you know, a nice surprise that adds so much to the game. Yeah. Um, I think we kind of wanted to do something similar where you don't expect this to be a horror game at all. So we don't have any of that in the marketing campaign in general. So mm. you don't expect that at all. But then once you're in there, the um, the feeling you get actually seeing that happen is kind of more visceral because there there's nothing that warns you, uh, yeah. for better or for worse, right? Like um, it, it is a, kind of a risky decision because a lot of people are too scared. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's one of yeah. those like difficult creative decisions to make. Um, I think we just ended up going that route because we felt that it was uh, it was interesting in and of itself to do that. Um, so yeah. If it weren't for the fact I'd played through it on stream, so I had some sort of investment in finishing it, um, I would probably have been too scared to finish the game. Like there's definitely a an element of because I'm just a very easily scared person, but I'm glad I stuck with it because it's it's amazing just like slowly getting to figuring out the stuff. Like it was. It's one of those things where I worry if I'm just a bad streamer, I'm bad at performing the way people do no, no, on I mean, streams, but if it was incredible. I, I, I'm, you know, basically people just happen to be here watching me do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it's like seeing seeing people scared <gasps> and when they're like watching something and saying <gasps> something, it's just no! fun. But... Yeah, I just got shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh yeah, now I see it. Yeah, great. 
Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love the feel of like, you can just grab the gun out of their hands and that gives you an extra second that you can like knock them over with stuff like, and they trip over things if you leave them in the path of their feet. Like it's just, it's incredibly well put together. And that must have taken ages to actually code to like work that way. Thank you. Um, yeah, Array in chat, U R R E. Uh, he's the one who did a lot of the, like a, pretty much all of the AI and the, um, you know, hooking up all the character behaviors and animations and whatnot. Uh, and he, yeah, he spent so much time, you know, making all the interactions with the robots as fun as I think they are right now. At least. Oh yeah, the, when I found the arm, I was like sold. The game was like, you can, <laughs> you can knock these people around in this incredibly great way. Just that was it. That was that was what I knew. It's gonna be good, and then it just, and then it had the twist. It felt like half the game, even though I know it's just the last level, but it was so much. It's, um, it feels good knowing what's in it now. Like, I think with VR, because it's like this, this new thing, there's this additional horror element of what, what, like, you don't even know what you could achieve in VR. Like, could something just come out round a corner when I'm not looking? Like, it's so, it's, I don't know if it, I don't, I've just... Oh. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you, you're so immersed in the experience. Like, any any type of thing that happens around you is going to feel so much more real and, you know, spatially there, right next to you, right? Yeah, like, um, I got I got to the is... I got to the part of the horror game... Well, to the part of the paranormal activity horror game where, like, you hear a creak when you go into the house, and that was it for me. I was like, that's too much. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, even uh, just with audio, you hear some sound, you can actually hear where it's coming from. <laughs> like, just yeah. that is really scary. Yeah, would you, you need to be careful with that type of stuff as well, because I do think, like, you, you can very much scare people so strongly in VR. So, like, if you do things like jump scares, or rather intentional jump scares, I suppose, uh, that, that can be a pretty bad thing in some cases, right? Uh, if you don't, like, prepare your players for it. Yeah. Definitely. I'm... You are... Uh... But the only jump scares in the game for me are just like there's just the, the ambient horror of what is even what is even happening now. Like just the the yeah. weight of the twist is great. When in in reality, it's there's one robot and he's quite easy to not be in the same room as to die. But he just yells at you and runs around and flashes like. Oh yeah, I mean the, the horror yeah. of that level is kind of what makes it so long, right? Like if you yeah. weren't scared, then that would be a pretty short level. But... Yeah, like I'm imagining the speed run of this level of that level is pretty short, but. It doesn't. That doesn't capture the um, the majesty of it. Like, I wasn't expecting the like. I I knew there was a twist, but I wasn't expecting the twist to be. It's a whole other game. <laughs> like, yeah. Is this scarier than Alien Isolation? Which, I, can't play because it's too scary. But like, in a way that's like not fun. <laughs> right. Well, you had a lot of people watching you and were excited to see yeah. you finish this. So. Yeah. Oh, shit. Right. I'm gonna need this bowl. I feel like there was something you were asking um, two streams ago, but I forget exactly. Um, I don't remember. Heck, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Damn it. I was trying to hit with the bowl because I threw all my knives and missed. That was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I'm so glad I finally have a proper VR setup. Uh, when I messed around with this a little bit at my old place, it was uh, it was very much like I just gotta clear some furniture out of the way and hope for the best. But now I've got this whole like room, this proper office. It's great. Oh yeah, I have. By the way, when you okay, I have questions. Yeah. <laughs> when when you went to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. We could like hear you, and you were like walking outdoors. Yeah. And I, w what is actually happening in the building around you? Um, oh well, the reason why I did that mainly was to test how the, the range, because I genuinely don't know. But uh, um, I just, it's, I was just walking through some gravel. Um, my office is is like a separate building from my house. Oh, is it like a garage or something? Yeah, yeah, it's um. I think I mentioned this, but my house is like a destroyed house that I got real cheap off of a madman. Um, oh, okay. Um, it's in the middle of nowhere and no one wants to live here and have been on the market forever, so like I got it for basically nothing. Um, oh, that's awesome. But like none of the stuff works. Like it's a whole thing. There was a load-bearing copy of Sonic Unleashed for the Wii holding a cabinet up. 
Um, <laughs> that's a fun story. But yeah, so but the one thing he had done was he'd made the he'd made the garage into almost an office. It was not very it was not great. We've like repainted it and moved stuff around and put a carpet in. But now it's like it's all this it's it's free real estate. Nice. It's, it's great. It's, yeah, it worked out okay. Also, there is a cat in the background. You might be hearing Thor <laughs> meowing a bit. That's cute. That's a cute name for a cat. Yeah, it has a really good name. Where are you? Where are you based? Oh, uh, the the company and I live in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, but I'm currently in Seattle. So. Oh. Oh right, uh, a coworker of mine. Oh yeah. <laughs> really wanted me to ask you. Yeah. When is the Night in the Woods video coming out? Ah, um, it was going to come out this month, but then something happened. I've said that a lot recently, but uh, um, it turned out that I can't delay the other thing I was going to do after it as long as I wanted to. Um, gotcha. Because um, my friend um, and sh my friend Shannon, um, we have a series that we work on together called Scanline that we've only actually done one of, but we've been trying to do more for ages. Oh yeah, um, I remember seeing the VHS one. Um, yeah. What, and, oh, right, yeah. neat. So in order to finish that in time to, like, on a time scale where, you know, I like, I like that I can, that I can take my time with videos and like finish them whenever I feel they're ready, um, whatever, like I don't mind, but Sharon has like a life and wants to get it finished. Um, <laughs> so well, One um, of those people. Yeah, so I'm gonna, so we're gonna do that. And then, as soon as that's done, I'm going to go back to finishing Night in the Woods. What's bad? What's, awesome. what's what's kind of awful is that like it's not the most advanced video. I got progressively worse at the knives as I continue with that. But uh, well, it's like not the most complex video I've ever made. Like the fact I've been saying I'll make it for a year and a half has made it like now I have to make it good, and that's making it take even longer trying to actually improve, you know, do something good with it. And it's just oh yeah, that's uh. <laughs> <sighs> That's a big mood. We had the same issue with budget cuts, actually. Yeah, you, uh, you we delayed were it for a while, didn't demo you? to budget cuts, like, really early. Yeah. Uh, and then it got incredibly hyped, and we were like, oh, we actually need to finish the game now. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so that was also scary. Mm. But, um, but yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, Night in the Woods is like a super popular game, so I'm guessing that's why there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it but, means yeah. it means a lot to me as a game, and the, the the amount of things I want to talk about or I feel are like worth adding keep changing because a lot of what i want it to be about is how like it's one of the first proper art games in my opinion um and i define proper in this as like people have different conclusions about it what it's about um in a, in a way that doesn't feel uh i don't know is it, oh geez i don't see know where i am what happened here It's it's hard, it's weird to it's hard to explain while I'm running from robots, but uh, it's um like well, I think with a lot of games that are supposedly art, there kind of is like an, an intended meaning, or there's like a puzzle element where you everyone has like a different idea about what it means, where at, or like what the the puzzle piece to complete the universe is. But in Night in the Woods, it's largely an emotional story, so it it kind of is it kind of can mean different things to people in a way that I don't think a lot of games managed previously. Um, I, I'm going to qualify that a lot harder in the actual video because obviously there's a lot of caveats to that. Um, so uh, part of it is going to be I want to explore what everyone else has said what they think Night in the Woods is about because it's fascinating to me that there are so many different conclusions. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's still, even if, you know, a piece of art doesn't just have a single interpretation, it's still a piece of art and it's interesting yeah. in and of itself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to put in words exactly what I mean, um, and hence why it's taken so long. And what I mean has got to become more and more meaningful as time goes on because it's because it's taking me so long to do it. So I've got to seem more clever. Yeah, that's what happens when you when you grow as a person and then eventually become a brand TM. Then you have to perform. Yeah, it's weird. That's 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 the weird thing about being a creator for me has been. I have a bunch of like really, I have a bunch of things that I like intended to make when I started my channel. Like here's a bunch of ideas I want to explore in this particular way. 
and I'm gonna have a great time doing it and you know I kind of don't really care if anyone watches and what anyone thinks because the fun is that I get to like not care about those things and just do this expression thing but now that a bunch of people have seen my stuff and know who I am I can suddenly feel the weight of actually wanting people to like me and I can feel the audience in a way that I couldn't before right um, can I also ask you like how do you um how do, how do you balance like what you want to creatively output and create uh, versus what people want you to create? Um, that is a really good question because uh, I don't think I have an easy answer. Uh, I think I just I decide what I think um, what I think I have something useful to say about at the time. Like uh, like the last thing I did I think was on climate change and. And that's like a topic that people have gone to again and again. It's not a, it's it's not a new thing. Um, and I could have easily done a piece on here's why this thing is, here's here's why global warming's happening basically. But I waited kind of until I felt like I had something to add to it. And the thing I added was like, well, if it's obvious, which it is, then why does this happen? And that's kind of a a thing I wanted to explore, that sort of thing. Um, right. So like, I, I'd like to eventually do something about. Um, about uh, vaccines, like why people, you know, what people think about that and why that's silly. But the specific thing I feel like I can add is I want to explore why it is that we kind of know, like the majority of people kind of know to trust scientists on that particular issue. But, but the same kinds of people will absolutely never trust scientists on like basically anything else, i.e. like global warming and so on. I think it's interesting how we learned our lesson about maybe scientists know what they're doing exactly once on one field, and then we have to do it again for all the other ones. Uh, and I found that fascinating. So, um, and the reason well, I have people done get video... selective after a while. It, it's just like confirmation yeah. bias. You find the studies and the scientists you want to listen to, and then you, you yeah. know, just listen to those. Yes, yeah, so I find it. Um, I find that I like to wait until I've got, I've got something where I know I I can actually say something that. The, the, they couldn't get somewhere else, basically. Um, right. You want to contribute to the conversation, right? In some yeah. way that's unique and interesting. Yeah, because I think something I didn't like about um, the kind of more right-wing or centrist or just like anti-SJW, whatever, YouTube, was whenever one of them decided a topic was, was a thing they could do, like they'd go after a specific person or a specific topic, suddenly they'd all do it. Um, and you can see that still at play now where like, when someone makes a response video to me or ContraPoint, all of a sudden it's like we're on the table and they'll all do it. Or um, when I did the thing about Flat Earth, uh, one of the people d did a Flat Earth thing because like, oh, well, I guess we can do that now. Um, and I, I kind of despise that. I, I want to do, I want to make, you know, do something that I can contribute in a meaningful way, even if it takes me forever to talk about it or whatever. Um, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a lot of like repetition in all of those like right-wing YouTubers. Yeah, there's a lot of well, here's my video on this thing that you already know about because you've seen the last six. Yeah, uh, I don't want to do that. It's also, it's also something that I find quite interesting. Also, sorry, sorry if I'm like meandering into conversations that are completely unrelated to what you're doing. No, um, no, it's 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 cool. I'm uh, I'm managing. I'm getting lost. So. It's good to. Okay. <laughs> it's good to have um, a thing to focus on. Yeah. One thing that I, I find kind of interesting is just comparing the popular right wing YouTubers versus the popular left wing YouTubers yeah. in the style of videos. Like hmm. it seems like a lot of um, you know the known left wing creators are doing very like artful things right now. Hmm. You know, it's not just a video with someone you know with opinions or whatever. It's more like you know an actual art piece in and of itself. Especially you know the stuff that uh, Contrapoints and um, Ali is doing with the Philosophy Tube, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's something you don't really see on the right, which is kind of interesting to me. Yeah, because th they don't really see what they're doing as art. They see it as uh, kind of like part of the point of this stuff, of the reason like that they, they did so well for so long is because their stuff is easy to make. It's low effort by design. Uh, so Right. I think and they it, are controversial opinions, which people tend to spread very easily as well. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it does make sense that the place the place we'd get to would like, because we'd, ah, oh no, sorry, I'm distracted, I'm dying. When, um, no, it's fine. when you critique someone, 
um, for being, you know, when, when you find someone disagreeable or you disagree with something someone says, you immediately start to see what's sort of stylistically wrong with what they're saying as well. Like, I also disagree with this deceptive way this is made, or I find this thing to be low effort in a way that kind of makes the whole thing even more clear. Um, so like, I think it makes sense that we would arrive at this sort of attempt, this like stylistic difference as well, um, because we, we can see that there's a, that we have to be as different from them as possible. We have to like beat the strategies as well as we beat like the actual arguments themselves or something. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just so nice that the, the known like left tubers or whatever you call them. Um, it, oh, nice, you did it. Uh, I think it's a. Uh, I think it's nice that like, not only like not only do you want to be correct, but you also want to look good while doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that's super nice. If you have like an art piece, it's it's so good. There uh, is also yeah. It. There is also that. Okay, I'm on I'm on the harder mode now of the same thing because I'm really curious what that entails. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the difficulty levels change the behavior of the robots as well as uh, how quickly they bleed out. Oh, cool. I think I might enable and disable a few. Um, like, there might be more guards on more difficult uh, settings. Mm. I could be wrong on that, though. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if we ever did that. I think a number... Oh, the knife broke. Oh, that's clever. Okay. Oh, you're gonna play... You're gonna do it like that, are you? I guess we also did that. Wow. <laughs> we had a lot of discussions, like design discussions, on whether or not the game should have, you know, broken uh, knives or not. Um, <clears throat> that's a really good idea. I like the... Uh, I liked the deadly dart that's in that one bit. It's cute. I wanted to keep that, but you have to drop all your stuff to, to get murdered by, by Adam. Hello. Oh, detected. Also, why did you kill the Roomba in your first playthrough? Or the first stream you did? I thought it would be funny. But it didn't do anything wrong. It was just cleaning up. I kind of assumed that the twist would be like, oh, the robots were people. Um, oh, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> congratulations for not doing that and having it be a much worse twist of, oh, they'll, they're, it's a, it's a monster. <laughs> He's scary. I'm legit gonna, like, go back and do that level again at some point just to see, just to see how quickly it can be done when you know what's happening, like. Uh, the uh, HR level? Or yeah. With Adam? Yeah, okay. I, also, I also just want to see what it looks like when Adam kills you, because I... I was, uh... You were out of VR when yeah. you died. Yeah, yeah. That was really good, by the way. I think it, like, made it so much more scary. Because <laughs> then you know there's a threat. You know, something can kill you. Yeah. That's good. A nice knife flip. Oh. <laughs> oh no, I broke my knife on the Roomba. Ugh, <laughs> oh, you were giving me helpful advice. No! Why did you do that? Why did you hit the Roomba? Poor little Roomba. I love how much oil they bleed. It's uh it's cathartic and also just incredibly sad. It's this perfect like mix. I mean, you you made a horrible murder scene, the the one that I posted on Twitter, the clip from your first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very ups I'm very sad I did that now. I feel judged. Yeah, you better be. You just kill them, Jesus. I wonder if the I bet there's probably points for doing it without being seen or without murdering, which is kind of. Yeah, there's a there's a whole scoring system in this. So if you don't get detected at all, then you get more points. Oh, sweet. Or like multipliers depending on uh, how you play through the thing. 
Oh no, the Roomba! No, no, leave it! He's already dead! I saw to, I saw to that. I saw to it that it was already dead. Okay, right. Does the microphone activate the robots? Oh, um, I don't remember if we kept that. Um, I do remember that we added that feature. But I don't remember if we actually have it in the final game or if we made it part of the difficulty setting. I think we might have it on the hardest one, actually, uh, where the microphone does actually activate the robots. That would be pretty funny. I want to try that now. Just go but it's also one of those. This is also one of those accessibility things, right? If you're playing in a loud environment, there's no way for you to not activate them in that case. Oh, that's um, clever. Yeah, that's very that's very considerate, and I wouldn't have thought of it at all. Yeah, it's very tricky. Like, we had a lot of, like, those uh, tricky design decisions. Like, all of the crawl spaces we have where you need to crouch, uh, like, those types of spaces, like, not everybody can play those. And, like, trying to figure out, you know, should we not have them at all or should we have them regardless? Mm. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky to do that. You ate a whole lot of oranges. Uh, all right. Oh, shit. I think he heard me. Oh, Marco says in chat that he never finished the microphone thing, so it's not in the game. Okay. Ah. Oh no. Go. No. Also, I also want to thank you so much for the Donkey Kong uh, trans rights stream. That was oh. so, so, so good. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's very nice. It was really say. wonderful to see like so many people come together for that. Um, yeah. 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 I, I'm still amazed that it happened. I. Nothing will ever happen like that again. It was incredible. I mean, it might do. It might. You never know. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll find out, but... I'm doing another thing soonish, but... You never know. Mm. But, uh, yeah. It's kind of an honor to have been a vessel for a thing like that. Uh, oh, man. I mean, the, the fact that you wanted to do it in the first place and to be <laughs> so, so, so supportive of mermaids, I think that's so good. Wow. I learned a lot, um, a lot about myself doing it, I guess. And a lot about my friends. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of folks I, um, I learned I can really rely on because of that. So it's, it was great, you know. That's awesome. <sighs> I thought you were going to say, I learned a lot about my friends. Some people I notice are now transphobes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I've been pretty good with friends in that regard. I have like one friend who, two years ago, he was way into Jordan Peterson. I don't know what he's up to now, but uh, oh, I'll have to check in on him next New Year's. <laughs> yeah. I got to annoy him because uh, the last New Year's that we hung out at a, at a friend's, a different friend's house, we um, my Flat Earth video was was premiering, so like I put it on on quiet in the corner on a TV, uh, so I could read the chat as it was going while we were doing other things. So he had to sit through mm -hmm. that. So. That's pretty good. That's that's my and that's my story. <laughs> no. I wish I could teleport in the menu so I could grab my knife. Also, yes, I do say trans rights. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in chat just said that. Okay, right. Oh. Oh, wow, it takes me back to the menu now. Oh. Oh wait, did you jump into the I pressed I pressed go on the save slot. Ah. Wait. What does that save slot load now? Oh, uh, you're in main, the main menu. Main menu start. When I press it, it takes me back to the main menu. Oh, wait. Did you... What happened to the save slot? Oh, it's still there. Seven hours playtime, but it says main menu start. So when I press yeah, it... Yeah, so it's loading the main menu. So there's... Oh, okay. Oh. Maybe that's just what it does when you finish the game. I actually don't remember how it behaves after you finish the game, but... It's interesting. I wanted a quick way of getting to Adam, but I would play probably the whole game again at some point, so I can just get there then. Uh, there, there is a level select menu. I don't remember if we still have the cheats, but if you type level select on your keyboard, <laughs> you might get the level selection menu. Oh wow! Like, is there a switch on the side of the arcade? Like, is that is that where you where you put it? So, oh no, you need to type it literally on your oh. real keyboard. Um, but it, it might also make um, just click new game. Oh, we had a level selection to the. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah, oh. you can just press the new game, and then oh, you can right. select the Oh, cool. Oh wow, yeah. 
Oh, that's the old school level selection menu that you enable. But... Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, just playing new new game gives you that. That's cool. Oh, man. So, um, how much of that level can you get through before Adam, like, becomes active? So, as far as I remember, um, I think he gets active when he sees you for the first time. So you yeah. kind of need to wake him up with something. So you can explore the level that he cannot see or hear. Uh, but as soon as he sees you, that's when he starts chasing you. Yeah. Oh god. I remember this going in the vents and hearing him sing Daisy. It's terrifying. I'm surprised you, you're going back into this nightmare. Yeah, well, <laughs> having actually managed it somehow, um, I feel a bit less mad. I, I have the... Um, the sound on now, uh, like up enough that I can hear hear things better, and the like very quiet violin noises really add to it. Yeah, the um, um, the person who did the audio, Jonas Schalberg, did like such a good job with this game. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad we we had him do that stuff. Yeah, like just... both with the the music and the audio. Yeah, just the sound of him. The, the sound of, of Adam moving around is incredible as well. Just so many little things. So, he, does he see you when you sort of go near his room? Like, is there a way of getting to, like, round his room without him, like, noticing? I don't think he can go around that hallway. I think he can see into that hallway. So, if, as soon I as you go out there, I think Adam's going to notice you. Just that hallway there? I see. Cool. That's good to know. My, um... Stuff was black when I loaded back in. My like arms were black in the game, like the the gun. Did you get a different color when you finish when you finish the game? Oh, you mean in the elevator? Yeah. Or... Oh, uh, should I go into technical details or have a simple explanation? Oh, sure, if you want. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so basically, the, we place a lot of volumes in each level, and each of these volumes specify how reflections should look on your objects that you're holding or any other objects. And um, these hmm. are called reflection probes. I and uh, in some areas, we just forgot to put a reflection probe, or we moved something and then forgot to move the probe. So if there's no probe somewhere, or if the probe is pitch black, then your whatever's there is going to look pretty much just black, right? Uh, so I think that's what happened in the elevator. You just like mm. uh, they got out of a reflection probe volume, and therefore they didn't really have any reflections. Ah, because the black uh, look of it was actually really cool. <laughs> you should put it in. <laughs> I should do that, sure. <laughs> what, um, like, what's, what, what's two going to be like? What's going to happen? What's... Uh, I'm actually not super involved in Budget Cuts 2, uh, oh. so we're working on several games at Need oh, Park, wow. so we, yeah. Um, That's cool. And I've been sort of, yeah, not really been on the uh, Budget Cuts 2 team much. Yeah, we're working on another game called uh, Garden of the Sea, which is sort of like a VR farming game. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Oh man. <laughs> That's that sounds actually like a really neat thing to put in VR. It's very cozy, very colorful. You take care of your crops, take care of your animals. Yeah. Oh, shine animals. Ah, well you could. You just need to get Garden of the Sea, TM. Yes. I just need to find a place that sells ferrets. <laughs> I don't think we have ferrets. <laughs> or no, we don't have ferrets. Oh. Uh, I mean, we could add one, name it H-bomb. Yeah, no, no, don't do that. I just generally need one ferret. Oh, actually, then I have a question for you. If you could combine two animals, a ferret and something else, what would you combine it with? A crocodile. Okay, so ferret, crocodile. Mm. Gotcha. What part is what? Like, how do you mix them? I don't know. <laughs> it's a weirdly specific question. Yeah, it's like... It's just Haven't long, you but, of this but, it's, but a little bit scaly, but it's also furry. It's like awful looking. It's like gotcha. a monstrous hybrid. Okay. So like all the cartoons of it would look really cool. Like it's a fun, a fun new friend. But uh, like, but when you actually meet him, he looks a horrible mutant that's just waiting to die. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's my brand. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Because like most of most of the animals we have in the game are hybrids of two animals. <laughs> so if we were to do this, then it would would be a com combination of two animals. I see. Awesome. Oh. People are saying you had that combination ready to go. You've already thought about this? Yeah. The other <laughs> obvious one, I guess, is a beaver. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. 
I think. Hmm. I think I get so tense and shaky in this area because I know he's coming that like I, um, the VR like messes up slightly. Um, like it freezes for a second in this hallway for some reason. It's happened a couple of times because I can hear him, um, and it like hangs out for a sec. I don't know. Gotcha. It's still scary. So if you approach him when the lights are on, does he? He has to go for the lights to switch them off before he goes for you, right? Um, he doesn't go to the lights until you sort of, you know, awaken him. So if you yeah. go there and then he wakes up, then he's going to go turn off the lights. I see. Yeah. I, I feel like it must be like there's a there's a way of getting into his room without alerting him. But I assume once you're in his room, he he's he'll go for you. I mean, there might be some very intricate way of like bouncing the translocator ball off of something into some hole somewhere, but <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's intentional. Um, Or actually, no, wait, I think you might be able to make your way in through the vent. I actually don't remember exactly the path there. Um, hmm. Yeah, I didn't I didn't work on this level specifically. Um, yeah. So a right in chat knows better than me. My, um... I see. So it's not, I assume that he, he had some kind of camera or something that allowed him to see me. Uh, when I got close, but it seems like he just looks out of his room. Yeah. I assume because of like, just because it's a broadcasting room that it'd be like, there'd be some cameras or something, but... Right. But no, he just looks... Uh, but I think the, the monitor in the broadcasting room is broken. Yeah. Or it has no signal, rather. Yeah. Uh, Marco in chat says that you can walk in from behind uh, or come through the vent from under him. So yeah, you can totally get in there. Cool. I have to remember where that is. Oh. oh. I think this is it. Oh yeah, I was also gonna ask you. I was really curious. Yeah. How's your... I thought you were gonna look into game development? Or oh. what's the, the progress and status of doing that? I've started and then given up on about three games. Uh-huh. Um, it's really hard to do. Um, so... Currently, my thing is basically just giving words of encouragement um, to the guy who does a lot of the coding, or did a lot of the coding as on on his, what I like his own projects, and just I, I just allow myself to understand that it's not for me. I'm not very good at it. It takes a lot of time and effort, and I'm not just I'm just not talented enough. So, right. I'm guessing it's probably difficult to find time to do both game development and uh, video. Content, right? it, yeah, it turned out to be much more hectic than I had hoped, but uh, I think just because like the game development thing was a goal I set on Patreon at a relatively low level because I'd assumed that it would be like it would happen, and then you know I I'd, I'd toil in obscurity for a decade and make a game, um, but instead it like picked up to the point where like oh I have to continue making videos now like. It's strange how I take ages to make videos, but at the same time, I'm still dimly aware that I should be making maybe slightly more than two a year, but... Okay, yeah. Nice. I found my way to his room without the, uh... I fixed that. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. You have to alert him because the door... It's his room, because he's like there looking at the key. That's interesting. Th that you can get this far. Try to grab it. Go for no, it. no, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to actually be killed by him. It's, he's too big and scary. I'm glad I never found out. <laughs> it only took me like two hours of hiding in a vent. Hello. Oh, okay. And now to never play this this level again. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh. So, so if you were yeah. to get into game development, what was oh, yeah. it that you were mostly curious to do? Um, I tried doing um. The main two things I tried doing were an RPG, um, just like a very kind of simple one, 
Like a kind of thing that you could almost do an RPG maker, but with a couple of custom things, but uh, I, g I gave up on that. Um, just because the scope of it was so much, like, oh, that's just a lot of art assets and like stuff that I couldn't, um, couldn't reasonably do with a team of two. Um, and the other thing was just going to be a sort of very simple looking, like almost, um, almost like the the game. The goal was to look like Half Life One level graphics, like horror game. So that was the basic thing. But uh, gotcha. neither of them really got off the ground. And then there was a third thing that was that was like kind of based on the second thing. But then basically, I described my basic idea to the guy who was helping me program it, and he had this completely much more complex idea because he's a genius. Um, and I was like, you should just do that and I shouldn't be involved because this is amazing. So that's basically how, that's how that, that worked out. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Oh, hello? Oh, yeah, hi. Can, oh, did oh I the, the sound has or... changed. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't oh, hear gotcha. you now. Why Ooh. did this happen? Five. Hello? There you are, sorry. Um, oh, I see, the Vive has speakers. Um, that you plug the headphones into, but it also has a separate option thing in the menu for when it's in a game. It's like an, another thing. I don't know. <sighs> and all the previous Vive, um, previous times I plugged in the Vive and turned it on, it like it seemed to be the, their own audio instance. It's a whole thing. Thank you, Valve. I like that the um, now that they've got it like perfected, it's the Valve Index. But prior to that, it was HTC's thing. <laughs> ah, my um, my mic is my normal mic is currently out of commission. Well, it's kind of in it, but like the one of the rubber bands that holds it together has expired. Oh, it's changed the thing. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. I knew that would happen. Okay. Um, I know what to change. One sec. Properties. Try talking now. Yeah. Hi. There. Talking words. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, so you're is... sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got the. Oh, let's let's switch to the full. Oh yeah. I've got the. The VR, smudge of where the stuff is rubbed off slightly. It's great. Oh awesome. god, yeah. I was gonna go in the shower before streaming and then I was like, I could go in the shower after streaming instead. You should probably do it after streaming VR, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh wow, gosh. Um, don't you have blue tack asks ADX man. It's a very specific kind of rubber band that it's, de it's designed to work in. Um, I, I'd assumed that the company would be like, oh, we have a proprietary rubber band that you have to buy and it's really expensive or something because it's a pretty expensive microphone. But uh, no, it's like an actual kind of microphone that you can just look up and get, but they only seem to ship in the US. So There we go. That's my fun rubber band story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Are you done playing for, for now? Or... I think I, I've been playing for four hours and 24 minutes, although 24 yeah, minutes of that was me setting up and getting, you know, and two hours of that was me sitting in a corner, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you did it really well. It is a very scary level. Uh, and you need to, like at the same time, like get a sense of space and, you know, figure out the puzzles. So it's very, very difficult and you did well. So, yeah. Oh. oh, olive oil says, hi, Harry. I had a job interview today, but my eardrum burst. So I have to go to the doctor instead. How's everyone else's day going? That's oh, awful. No. That's a real shame. Um, I've never had that happen, but like eardrums bursting is like oh no and i swim a lot like what happens then does the water just go in oh, <laughs> i don't know oh, i don't like it <laughs> good luck with that <laughs> okay now what are there aren't any other good are there any other good vr games so oh, are you asking me or yeah, I... yeah you oh, oh no uh i actually haven't played a whole lot of vr games yeah. uh we, i sort of like i was sort of working on budget cuts in a bubble um mm. but i have played a few but it was mostly you know during the um uh beginning of the early days of vr oh. um but, but i'm sure a lot of people would have recommendations in chat yeah um, i'm thinking of like i wonder if hover junkers is um like i wonder if it actually does have players and i just assumed it didn't i'm gonna 
I'm gonna go in the menu. Uh, I don't know. I do believe that they are working on a new game. Uh, is it Boneworks or something? Boneworks. Uh, something like that. Uh, and I, that one looks pretty cool. And I think that's multiplayer too. Uh, so I'm guessing that's the one that's gonna have the bigger player base. Um, I think just mash my keyboard with my uh, with my controller trying to do that. So I'm gonna maybe not do that. Oh man. But I mean, otherwise, like Beat Saber is one of those games that's been growing a lot in popularity. Beat Saber is awesome. I played a little bit of that. I was like, this is great. I should play it on stream and then. But then I thought, oh no, budget cuts. <laughs> oh wow, I'm glad I got to finish. Well, I'm glad you play budget cuts and hang out with you on the same stream. It's been awesome. Yeah, heck, thank you so much for playing. It's again, like I said, it's been an honor like seeing you oh, play it, especially since, yeah, a lot of us have been like fans of yours. So well, <laughs> yeah. thanks a lot for making it, and thanks for being so, um, so kind and for coming on on short notice. Oh, no, thank you so much for having me on at all. So yeah. Oh no. Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered is coming out, and I've still not finished playing Final Fantasy VIII on the stream. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Okay, Harvard Junkers, where are you? Yeah, isn't like a YouTuber on the team or something? Stress level zero, yeah, that's... That's Brandon's company, right? Uh, I think so, I recognize the name Brandon. Yeah, Brandon yeah. JLA. Yeah, they have the Node channel, I think, on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Someone, um, someone's given this game a thumbs down in May. Thumbs down, and the review's title is nice, I think. Well, that might be the, the game, the <laughs> account. This game is so dead, is deader than my kids who died from measles and polio. Uh, oh, jeez. But uh, everyone else, like people seem to like it. It's just no one plays it. It's such a shame. I'm yeah, I mean that, that's so usually what happens with like it's 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 VR. There's not a whole lot of players in there. Uh, yeah. I think like the probably the VR experience that has the most users. I would guess is still like VR chat or something. Yeah, VR chat's pretty good, and that's and that you can play that just with like a normal PC, can't you? Uh, oh yeah, it can. Yeah. So, well, that oh yeah, that definitely helps the player base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it's yeah. not just VR, so yeah. Gosh. For sure. Well. People are saying the multiplayer is dead, but they added a single player mode oh, in Hopper Junkers. Yeah, I, uh, I, might, I might get it and try it. And you know, hopefully, I can harass some of my viewers into coming on <laughs> and playing it. Uh, okay. Wow, I'm gonna wrap this up. Oh god, I was going to like my backup game has been. You know, do you know Hades? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, it's a it's a terrible game. I played all of on stream because people wanted me to. Um, the, and Hades Two is coming out, but there's also it has Steam Workshop support, so people have made a bunch of fan mods for it. So Wait, how do you spell it? H a y d e e. As soon as you look at footage of it, it'll be very clear what the appeal oh, of that game is. Um, thank you, thank Prophetic Sea Four Thirteen for sub for subbing, but um. You, fans have made all kinds of outfits for the character that are less horrifying and also new levels and I'm kind of curious to see what those are so wait what is it like a porn game or no, it's <laughs> question a, it's mark a, it's a puzzle game but where a okay. character is the character looks a certain way uh-huh um, <laughs> I can tell and the camera zoomed in uncomfortably close at all times um, one of the mods I've installed for it zooms the camera out so Oh, nice. So it's less directly <laughs> in your face. So 90, what's, the, what's the actual gameplay? So, oh, it's, um, yeah. it's sort of a bit like Resident Evil, but with like jumping. Oh, it's okay. A, sure. it's, a pla it's a very janky platformer, but also there's a gun. There's guns in it. I don't know. It's um, Video games usually have guns. Yeah, I, I'm kind of obsessed with it because it's curious how... There's like an interesting game in there that isn't isn't there. Like it's I don't know, it's like the I don't know, it's the, maybe that's the game I should make. I should make the game Haiti feels like it could have ended up being but definitely wasn't. I don't know. Gotcha. It's yeah, a, like the the ghost of a great game is in yeah. there. Oh, uh, ATX man in the chat says it's a butt platformer. Yeah, that's the um <laughs> that's the that's the genre it's in, whatever, I don't know, so. Sure. Video games are really hard to make, um, so I'm just in, I'm really amazed by budget cuts, and I'm so glad I finally finished it. Yeah, thank you so much for playing it. It took a long time to make, so. Wow, yeah. 
thank you to Casey for raiding us just now, but I think we're finishing. Everyone, have a great night. Um, I guess I probably will at some point do my budget cuts because the arcade is really fun. So um, oh, thank you to Michael thank for you. Just now. So I don't know if that happens um, I, and you're around, I'd love to have you on again and to discuss more things. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can just message me on Twitter. Um, awesome. You can just reach me there. So Or Discord, I suppose. Oh, sweet. I'm going to have to play this whole game again if I do want to do a video about it. So I'll have to see at some point. I'll just have to coordinate when I find out when the thing's coming out. I don't know, because it's... VR is such a still such a burgeoning field that there's like very little analysis of it. So I'm, I'm curious what I could come up with if I actually felt like that was a thing I could do. I don't know. Well... So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, one thing that I've been thinking about that I think is interesting. Um, you know, there has been a lot of talk in like violence in video games and whether or not mm. that affects people in various ways. Uh, and I've always felt that VR goes one step further where like visceral violence that you can commit is actually so much closer to the real thing uh, mm. compared to a flat monitor game. Um, so that's yeah. something I've been like trying to figure out, you know, is it actually, you know, worse or is it just another one of those, we have the new medium and then we think it's bad, but then it turns out it's not really bad or whatever. I um, think that I learn, um, I learn a much, much harsher lesson in, uh, in VR. Like sure there is like, it's more real. So maybe it does desensitize you to the idea of like committing violence or something. But in a VR game, when a person who you know is also standing there in their world, falls down dead because you've shot them or when you know a robot explodes in oil and makes very sad <laughs> yeah. noises it feels so much worse like mm -hmm. i feel less inclined to do violence after uh throwing knives at people in vr uh, <laughs> that's beforehand. awesome <laughs> but i do remember i do remember this incredible moment of just intense sociopathy where there was a there's a game mode in one of the in i think pavlov where you're in like a, an office level and Everyone just has a revolver, so you have like five shots, and then you have to manually put the things back in. And I remember this kid who, and I could tell it was a kid because he was physically shorter than me, missing all of his shots and like walking up to me with the gun out, like slowly trying to put a bullet in, going, hang on, hang on. Like he wanted a truce until he was done loading his gun. And I had this moment of, you just, you were going to kill me. <laughs> and like I felt it, like it was just like the cheek of it hit me so hard. It's like, just. I don't know. I think um, I, I, I'd love to do like I, I've considered doing a thing on game violence. I was thinking about it today. Like I'd love to do just like I'm going to make an hour long video about the studies into it because it's it, all, all data is constructed. Like how do they measure what what violent tendencies actually are? Um, yeah, I think this is something I think I heard this on Adam Ruins Everything. But one of the studies, one of the things it measured was how likely people were to feed their opponents spicy food. Uh, was one of the th aggression markers that they looked for. Like just so, oh, I'd love to okay. do a proper dive in. Like, what what do they mean when they say violent tendencies? Like, how does that even work? Just like a a, yeah. a guilt free, non knee jerk reaction. He just let's how how would you even how what is this data? Um, I think the word is like operationalized. Like, how do you how do we create a thing that we can measure this in? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that would be a really interesting one, because I think a lot of people have heard about those studies, but never actually looked into them, right? Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the times, um, people who've kind of, because they like games a lot, and they don't like the insinuation that they're violent people, have this knee-jerk, like, no, of course it doesn't cause violence, when, like, it's not a, an, an either-or thing, it's, it's, it's a much more nuanced thing, and we do have to, at some point, have a standard for how to measure it, if such a thing was possible, and I think that'd be an interesting thing to look at. I think... Oh, did Ian Danskin do a video about a study in Germany? Um, I think the video is called like think... a single study in Germany. Okay. Or something. Yeah, like I don't that. remember if he did that. A single study in Germany. Innuendo Studios, video games and cultivation theory. Yeah, there's um. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's um. That's definitely things I want to look at, in case I'm just ripping that off right now. Anyway. I should I probably should... look at that one too. Uh, yeah, like he's do doing that. good stuff. Yeah. Well, I should probably get to work on that video. I need to finish in a week, but. Uh, so, oh, my knees are red. I think I've rubbed my knees raw. Yeah, my knees are red. I'm so that. sorry for your knees. <laughs> Make the vents bigger. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Have a, have a great night. Yeah, thank you so, so, so much. Awesome. Um, bye. Right. Yeah, bye.
Ah, and it's a goodbye from me too. Gah! Gah! Gah!